My name is Will Nice Walner. I'm 18 years old. I believe in taking care of myself, a positive attitude, and constantly watching American Psycho. In the morning, if I'm feeling a little down, I'll turn on the TV and watch the movie. After that, I'll walk over to my neighbor's house and see how he's doing. He still believes in the concept of holding on to his soul. Isn't that amusing? Today, I'm going to ask him again if he'll review my favorite movie. The 1,252nd time is the charm, right? There is an idea to a Will Nice Wonder, yet there is no real me. Only a demon, something not of this earth. And though I can hide my cold stare, and you can shake my hand, and maybe even compare our lifestyles, I am simply not there. Oh, hey, neighbor. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait, I've got a favor to ask you. What do you want, Will? I want you to review my favorite movie. American Psycho? Yes. No. Why not? Because I don't know. Well, so you could do it. Maybe. You will? Let's we'll see. You like Phil Collins? Fine, I'll review it. Now get out of my house. Okay. Why do I even come back to this house? Hello and welcome. As you can tell by the title, I'm the Obsessed Movie Man, OMM. You ever have those days when you're at work, you're talking to your coworkers, when all of a sudden some dorky guy comes in and shows off his new business card? This seems harmless enough at first, until you realize that his business card is better than yours. You try to think nothing of it, but there's that business card staring you in the face. He walks away and you begin to get angry and you start to imagine doing horrible things to him, like poking his eyes out, or stabbing him in the stomach, or cutting off his privates. And then within the blink of an eye, you realize you've done it already. Don't you hate it when that happens? American Psycho is just what the title promises. It's about an American Psycho named Patrick Bateman, played by Christian Bale, and his everyday life. That's about it, really. We see him get up in the morning, go to work, hang out with friends and loved ones, and then we see his private life, which is full of sex, drugs, and a lot of murder. The film is good on its own, but what's really intriguing about the film is the questionable sanity of our narrator, Patrick Bateman. He introduces himself to us and we see the world as he sees it, but there are instances within the film where it is debatable of what we see and if it's actually happening. An example would be after he kills someone in his apartment, Bateman drags the corpse outside, passing a security guard who sees that Bateman is dragging a trash bag that is leaving a trail of blood on the ground, but shrugs it off and ignores Bateman. Even when he is talking to some people in the street, the very suspicious bag bothers no one. Another example is when Bateman attempts to feed a cat to a cash machine. When a woman tries to stop him, Bateman shoots her, attracting the attention of the police. Bateman kills a few of them, blows up a cop car, and kills a security guard. After this, the scene is never mentioned again, and no one ends up searching for Bateman. Even this reoccurring police detective who questions Bateman about the murder of his co-worker cannot tell that Bateman is obviously either lying and or hiding something. The final giveaway that something is up is near the end when Bateman is talking to his lawyer. He confesses his crimes and talks about the murder of his co-worker, only for the lawyer to dismiss the claim, saying that he recently had lunch with the co-worker. The lawyer even makes fun of Patrick Bateman without referring to Bale as Bateman. So, what's up with this? Is it possible that Bateman is just imagining everything that's going on? It's possible, but I think there are a few instances where some of this is reality, because near the end there are cuts to Bateman's secretary who is in his office and reads his journal, while Bateman is simultaneously confessing his sins. So Bateman probably does have a good job and lives a wealthy life. Maybe the case is that he is well off, but he's not really Patrick Bateman. It could be interpreted that Bale's character has pretended to be Bateman and sees himself as this person. The beginning of the film says he wears a mask of sanity and that it's slipping. Could it be that this mask is slowly revealing to Bale that he is not Bateman? Another way to look at it is that Bateman represents the evils of the upper class. The homeless are shown to be down on their luck, but still overall friendly and polite. The same thing can be said about the middle class who are quiet, well-meaning, and modest. The upper class, however, is made up of some of the most despicable, self-absorbed jackasses imaginable. To them, life is simply about all the pleasures they can get. Maybe the movie is about how the powers of wealth can affect someone, with the delusions of power dominating a man's mind and driving them crazy. Who knows? Maybe Patrick Bateman is just in a padded cell somewhere and all the people in his life are either fellow patients or doctors treating him. 
I guess a way to summarize my ramblings is that the movie is all up to interpretation, very similar to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. This isn't as confusing as The Shining, but that's not saying much. That's like saying I like The Phantom Menace more than I like Son of the Mask. Damn that movie. I think this is why the film is really worth watching, because the more times you watch it, the more things you notice that you failed to notice before, and it makes you want to talk about and analyze it. Again, much like The Shining. The major downside to this movie to some people is that there are little to no likable characters. Our protagonist is indeed Patrick Bateman. He's an egotistical, methodical, and deranged psychopath who kills the homeless, hookers, and dogs. Dogs? No! You kill hookers and homeless people, but when you kill a dog, you've crossed the line, mister! There's nothing wrong with Bale's performance. In fact, I would dare say it's one of his best. My problem, though, is that there is no one to relate to in this film. Are we rooting for Bateman? Hell no, he's a serial killer. What about the secretary or the detective? You would think so, but they're not in it that much. It can be argued, however, that you are not supposed to root for anyone in this film. The purpose of the film was to show the interpretation of the world through a madman's point of view. So I guess it depends on your preference. Do you want some characters that you can relate to as well as additional hateful characters? Or do you not mind having a majority of your characters be unlikable? I would personally like to have a few more likable characters, but I think the film is so interesting that the characters in the film don't bother me as much. American Psycho is a fascinating look at the perspective of a rich and powerful madman. The camera work and editing is all good, but it is clear that it is the betrayal of Bateman by Christian Bale, and the ideas that the story provides are what sell the finished product. If you want to watch a film that really makes you think and gives you something to talk about at great lengths afterwards, I suggest you check this out because let's face it, it's more fun to stay at home and watch a movie than trying to get a reservation at Dorzia. Thanks, this is an OMM review. This is OMM, signing out.